guys, welcome back to another Unfiltered Gamer board game review. Today's game up on the tabletop is called Drunk Hill. Drunk Hill. So 4 to 6, 4 to 12, 4 to a lot of players, 4 to 10 players. About 40 to 60 minutes to play, and uh, it's called Drink Hill, technically, right? The drinking game. In this game, you're going to be getting a character, and that character has a little special ability. You're going to be getting some dice, and you're going to be rolling around the board trying to achieve a great victory. You'll be utilizing STD cards, as well as challenge cards, and, of course, special items that can help you progress along the way. There's certain spaces on the board that you're going to land on that is going to make you suffer in some way, preferably by taking a drink of some sort of beverage. Most likely this game is going to be an ages 21 and up game. However, it's uh, this video is suitable for pretty much anybody to uh, to uh, watch, I suppose. Anyway, let's go ahead and take you down below and show you what it looks like, as well as what you get in the game. And then I'll explain how to play Drink Kill the Drinking Game. Oof, man, this is a fun night. So here we have the game Drink Kill and everything included. And as you can see, it is a wild masterpiece of art everywhere on this board. Everybody's going to get a character to start with and there are a bunch of little characters to choose from over here. Some of our more exquisite choices are gonna be simply uh, the vomiter, the gangster, the stoner, the pimp, the ninja, the viking, and the thief. There are more of them, however. Uh, you're going to start with picking all your characters and then placing all of your characters over here. It's going to come with all these little characters with nice little standees, along with three decks of cards, items, challenges, and STD cards. And in general, the item cards are going to let you do something positive. The challenges are going to make you do something that's mostly negative. And the STD cards are things you give to players that make them suffer throughout the game in some way. Um, and they do different things as well. Here's some extra challenger cards here. And um, you're also going to be getting two dice and the rules and, of course, the box, which has a bunch of artwork on it as well. When you begin the game, it's pretty simple. You're going to roll both die, and then you're going to utilize the total cumulative number, 6 and 4 is 10, to move around the board. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, and 10. When you land on certain spaces, things happen, like going back three spaces and then landing on certain other spaces, like the pub here. Let's go ahead and explain what all the, sp all the spaces are. The first of all, you can see a flaming shot. That's simply either to take a drink or a shot, depending on the rules that you want to play. Any of the numbers with arrows is just going to indicate that you're going forward or backward those number of spaces. You have a pub space over here, which is going to let you drink along with somebody else. You're going to have a totem space over here, which is going to allow you to draw item cards. Item cards could be anything from a black cat, which says that the user slices the sum of an opponent's dice uh, by half. That's pretty interesting. Or a gang banger, so you know, some kind of thug. The user can take a shot and make an opponent discard all of his or her items, and so on and so forth. They all do different things, right? But you think you get the idea with item cards. Uh, you can also go ahead and land on something like this question mark, which is going to be a challenge card. So for instance, maybe you have to kiss the player who is the most mm, knickered or plastered. Uh, another one could be uh, take a selfie while doing a duck face. <laughs> or how about, uh, wow, that is like a stripping kind of, well, it's like a pole dancing type of challenge. And they get crazier and less crazy, just depending on the ones you're going to be drawing. And uh, you're also going to be able to go to these little toxic areas, and you can have these little STD cards. Let's go ahead and read one of them. This is Alone in the Dark. The user chooses an opponent to be keep blindfolded the entire round. It doesn't come with a blindfold, but you can get one really cheap if you want. Put it on the player, and th crazy things can happen while that goes on. Another one is Hippie Love Fest. Maybe you have to hug the player to your right for an entire round as well. Uh, and uh, that's the basic idea of the game. You're going to be moving around this board as you score, and you're going to be trying to get to the vomit here space, which is the ending. There's little special spaces that do certain things, utilizing the cards in here. If you don't have them, they don't do certain things. And of course, you're going to have uh, little hospital spaces that can help you. There's certain areas, that, like this whiskey volcano area that has a lot of shots over here, or the pub area is going to have a lot of pub stuff going on there, and so on and so forth. Then you get the game. But anyway, players are just going to be moving around. It's going to be one player's turn to the next player's turn and whoever gets the end first is the winner of the game. I don't think I really need to explain any more than that. I think you get the idea of the game, see the artwork of it. Let's come up and talk about it and I'll tell you what I think about all the components, all the all the good stuff in Drink Kill and some of the negatives as well. Okay, so what do I think about Drink Kill or Drinko? I don't know how you exactly pronounce it, but I think I think you get the idea. Well, it's a drinking party game, okay? This is going to be for people that are over the age of 21 that want to have some fun. There's some more scandalous cards in there. They get anywhere from stripping to, to taking backwards shots and whatnot, all the way up to things that are less 
provocatory, I suppose. The item cards are usually beneficial in some way and affect the way the game is played. There's a little bit of strategy. For the most part, you're just going to be rolling dice and attempting to get through the map with uh, getting as less fushnicket, as they say, or, or drunk, as possible. Uh, and of course, if you're playing the hardcore way, which is all the spaces are shot spaces, where you take a full shot as opposed to a drink, which I would probably suggest is a drink, uh, then it can get you pretty toasty very, very quickly. The game's actually rather quick, which is nice, because a lot of these games that go on the board and they're drinking games, they take a couple hours or an hour and a half, because players are typically a little slower when they're partaking, right? Uh, but in this case, you roll two dice, you can move 12 spaces, and that's already like almost a fourth away around the board, right? And uh, you can play with a lot of players and all of the cards are really easy to read and they work really well for a party scenario. This is actually a party game I'm going to bring out for my next uh, drinking party fest. And um, that's actually going to have a couple days here. And I would be excited to see how all of the players play with it. We did it with four and five and six players with different groups of people. I only played once because I technically don't drink, which is fine as well because, in fact, they do have a character for me. They have the nerd, and the nerd is actually the DD player. Uh, the nerd can avoid a challenge or an STD card of his choice and never has to drink. So that's kind of nice for when you're out in the road and you need somebody to DD. It still lets them play the game, and they have some good times because a lot of the cards do not require actual uh, drinking of any sort. You don't actually even have to drink liquor, but realistically in this type of game I probably would suggest you do. The artwork is zany and fun and interesting. It's got a bunch of crazy stuff going on with it and I like that. I'd like to see more gals in the game. There is a few of them but there's just a lot of dudes especially with all the characters. I think there's only one gal character in here, the hottie. She's kind of a hottie but I'd like to see more. Um, realistically though these are also personas like the nerd uh, the thief, the viking, the ninja anybody can be these cards basically it's not that big of a deal but overall the artwork is really nice, I like it, it's got this weird vibe to it, it reminds me of those old uh, garbage pail kids things going on, it has people doing all kinds of gross things on here I'll show you a little picture but overall it's a fun little party drinking game you're gonna know if you like this or not or you're gonna know somebody who probably would like this a group of people i, ha I have my gaming group specifically that does these kind of games only if you're a strategically minded gamer this is not going to win you over in any way for a drinking game or if you're somebody who wants to have um a nice quiet night this is also not gonna be that type of thing but if you're into a drinking party game that holds up to 10 players with a single board and everything plays on the board this is a, probably a pretty cool little game for you it's one of my one of my more personal favorites that i've seen lately and i did manage to get through the whole thing regardless of the fact that i was the nerd character and was uh, not partaking overall a solid little drinking game i definitely enjoyed drink hill and i suggest if you like this type of game you do check it out in the description below see if you like it as well drink hill a fun family friendly not family friendly at all drinking game <laughs>